Okay, let's talk about light now. Another one of my favorite topics. And this is a, light is a topic that, that comes up a lot on the microgreens forums and, and Facebook pages. And, and I've actually found over the years that light, it's a really interesting topic, you can really delve into it. But in the end, it, it's quite simple. So you may notice in your daily life that there's different types of light. And, and the way we categorize lights in terms of our daily use is basically as warm or cool. So behind me we've got a cool light. So this is a cool white light, has a, a Kelvin value of 6500, and this is how we measure color temperatures in Kelvins. And then you'll notice on my face that I kind of have, have more of a yellower or, or reddish tone. And this is because I have more of a yellow light coming uh, at me here. And so these are the, the two different lights you're probably most familiar with. Now, the, the yellower light is sort of a softer light. It's a gentler light, it's more relaxing. The cool light is something you'd see in a hospital or, or in your workshop. It, it really makes things nice and uh, crisp and clear and easy to see and well-defined. Now, natural light is around the spectrum of 5,500 to 6,500 Kelvin. So this would be the sunlight and I'm kind of got this crazy idea, very much coupled with the, uh, the same idea of growing microgreens in soil, that really, um, number one, if you can grow everything in pure sunlight, that's what you should be doing. And they should be getting as much sunlight, whether it's direct or indirect, as, as you can give them, or as they need. Obviously, different microgreens need more or less light. Um, but if you can't do that, um, using a cool white light or something close to the spectrum of sunlight in the 5500 to 6500 K realm in terms of color is what you want. And when we look at that from a horticultural point of view, this blue light spectrum really per, per, uh, promotes vegetative growth, leafy growth, uh, greenness within a plant. And, and white light still has uh, lots of other colors, it just has lots more uh, of the blue light. Now. The, when you get into the more of the yellow lights and the warmer colors, what they tend to do is, is be more for a plant in the fruiting and the flowering stage. And what you'll notice is it actually causes the plants to stretch more and it creates more internodal space. Now in a lot of microgreens that doesn't make a difference, but one where you would notice that difference is in pea shoots. Peas, when they're ready to mature at about six to eight inches or, or however big you want to have them, have many branched leaves, whereas most of your other microgreens are a stem and, and, and a couple of cotyledons, a couple of seed leaves. But peas are, are, are different, where they have branched leaves very early in, in their life cycle. And if you were to grow those in blue light and under a yellow light and, and watch the difference, what you would see is a really big internodal space, which is the space between your, your branches uh, in the yellow light and a much more compact plant in, in your blue light. So, as a general rule, there's really no reason to have uh, a, a, any yellow light. You, you just want to have a, a light source between 5500 and 6500 Kelvin, uh, whether that's LED or fluorescence or uh, um, metal halide, whatever type of lighting you use, that, that, that's really important. I still use fluorescent lights, and, and as part of the series, I'm going to take a look at some LEDs, and I will actually put some, some yellow bulbs in one of these, and we'll, and we'll see the difference, because uh, it's, it's just nice to demonstrate these things, uh, but I have no doubt about the importance of, of, of the blue light. Um, the next thing about light is what I would call the, uh, not so much the intensity, but the, the area that it covers. So I have, I have space here to grow uh, two trays. And I have two sets of lights here. You can't really tell, but there's one here and there's one in the back, each with, with two bulbs. So I have four bulbs all together. Now I could probably grow these with one right in the middle and you will see that. Um, but you will also see the ends kind of leaning in a little bit to, to get to that light. So I found by having the two lights like this, um, I get really, really good even coverage and I get optimum growth. Uh, the other thing is, um, these lights give off a little bit of warmth. And, and there's a lot of talk in the lighting world about having lights that don't give off heat. And, and really that's because it's wasted energy. And LEDs give off virtually no heat, and so, so all the energy you use goes into light. Now, I th my impression is where a lot of this idea of, of, of getting rid of that 
heat that comes with lights comes from the cannabis industry, or, or rather I would say the uh, illicit cannabis industry. Because when you're using um, high powered lights, whether it's metal halide or uh, high pressure sodium, um, when you've got a thousand watt bulb, about 900 watts of that is heat and the rest is light. Like there's so much heat coming off those. And when you're in an enclosed space, you need to get rid of that heat. And so you have to have an elaborate venting system, a hood to draw that stuff out in order to get rid of the heat. Now, in a system like this, I actually want that little bit of heat from the fluorescent lights. It gives me this tiny little microclimate in here, which really improves growth. And that works on this scale, and it works on a bigger scale as well. The challenge with this set, sort of setup on a bigger scale is that if I want sunlight, lots of ballasts like this are gonna block the sunlight. I'm gonna get a lot of shading. So when I get into bigger systems, I like to have the lights high above, uh, so they're not casting shadows, multiple shadows. And depending on your climate, um, you may want those lights to generate heat, especially in the winter months. So as you may know, I'm in Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, coastal Canada. Uh, you know, summers here are great and sunny, but winters are dark and cold and rainy. And we need the supplemental light to get good crop growth, and we need the supplemental heat. So we have heaters, but getting extra heat from the lights is, is an added bonus. So we're not wasting that heat that's coming from the light. We're getting full use of, of all the energy we're using there. Because we have good airflow in our system, um, that, that, that heat isn't just staying up top where the lights are, it's being pushed down so it gets mixed in. So you have to really know your system in terms of how to know how to use the light, how to get rid of that heat, uh, all sorts of things like that. Another advantage of LEDs is they are drawing much less energy. Um, but that said, fluorescents don't draw a lot of energy. Me running these lights for 14 hours a day, every day, is barely going to make a dent on my electrical bill. They're still very, very low wattage. And, you know, I'm in a place where electricity is, is relatively inexpensive. If electricity is, is a major factor for you, LEDs uh, might, would, would make a big difference. They're definitely going to reduce the amount of, uh, of electricity you use. I've not grown with LEDs, but I'm going to try some in this system to look at a few things. Uh, I'm not convinced that spending the extra money for uh, LED infrastructure is worth it yet. Uh, I, still, I still think that price needs to come down to make it more viable. Uh, but it'll be interesting to play with it and to see how growth compares between the fluorescents and the LEDs. I've heard, uh, I've heard both sides. Um, my colleague Diego Futter swears by the LEDs. He says that the light is much better. And another grower I talked to recently says like he just can't good, get good growth from the LEDs no matter what he does. So there's a lot of factors there to consider. Uh, and sometimes it's just a preference. So these are things to keep in mind. Um, in terms of the, the distance that the light should be from the crop, um, you want the light fairly close. And, and what I've always done in the system is that I want the light about a hand's width away. So you can see that this tray as it is now, this, this dying tray that's been harvested, um, is technically too far from the light. And even at this distance, I'm gonna get a little bit of reaching. So you've got two options here. Uh, sometimes you have adjustable lights, you can just lower them on a, on a uh, pulley, and that way you can just do them little bit by little bit. Or as we talked about in the beginning, you can place something underneath to bring these up and they quite easily reach up to the lights there. So that to me, it's pretty close. If I wanted to, I really wanted to, I could have uh, like another little tray upside down there. I could have two of those trays. And that to me is actually a lot easier than having a pulley system or something here. It's gonna take time. It means this actually needs to be higher because I need space for the pulleys. And this is really easy. It, it really is simple. And you don't need to be doing it inch by inch as the crop grows. I would just do it like this until the crop, crop got pretty close, and then I would take this one out and let it stretch a bit. Once again, for home production, I can have a bit of variation. I'm not too bothered by that. If I was doing a, a commercial production under lights, I might have them on a pulley, and it would be on an automatic system. It would just go up uh, as it needs to. So, yeah, just a couple of things to review here. Uh, number one, you've got a lot of options for lights, whether it's your, your typical fluorescence, your LEDs, or something like a metal halide. Uh, you're going to get different heat signatures and different energy uses for each of those. It's really, really important to use uh, light with a high K value. I like them to be 5,500 or over. I think you could probably go as low as 4,000 K, but look for the 5,500 to 6,500 K range if you can. 
uh, and then also having lots of light so you get really 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 good coverage uh, so you're, you're not getting any leaning at all and you're just getting nice uh, even germination and growth and everything as, as things grow and yeah these lights uh, are on a timer and so they come on and off as, uh, as I need them I do these right now in a 14 hour cycle uh, the reason for that is uh, it's if you think about the uh, the time of day in different parts of the world, a 12-hour day and a 12-hour night is what we get here at the equinox. It's when the, the Earth is getting uh, in position with the Sun uh, relative to the angle of the Earth that day and, and night length are exactly the same. And so I know stuff grows really well in the spring and the fall, um, but as you go a little bit into summer and just a little bit before fall, there's sort of this optimum time that I think uh, we, we get crops. And so I'm putting stuff around the 14 hour mark to get really, really good production. If I get something that's behind, I can give it a little more light maybe for a bit, but plants need dark. They need a resting period. And so that's really important to make sure they get that. And there's no point having light on all night um, and using energy if it's not gonna give you a better crop. You wanna use the minimum amount of light to get the, mo the most optimized crop that you can. Even though the electricity is inexpensive, there's no point paying for something if you don't need to. Um, the other thing is, if this is in your home, you know, do you want to have this light on all the time? At a certain point in the evening, you know, you might want your kitchen space for relaxing or this other space for relaxing. So having it so, uh, you know, it, it's off at times is going to be really important. We'll do some playing around in future bits where I might put a little bit of a curtain around here to block that off. At least gives me the option if my lights are still on, but I, I have company or I want to do something different. Um, but also I want to be mindful not to restrict airflow in here, uh, to, to, which will induce disease. So it, it gives you a sense of how the different parts of our system are connected, uh, and we need to be mindful of these when we, when we make decisions like that. So that's our overview on light. Uh, if you have questions, you can leave a comment, and we can cover some more of this in a future uh, episode.